I'll be back. I just got to grab my chart. Okay. So because this so well goes along with what you were talking about or what we were talking about with the program and a whole new meaning to inside voice, I wanted to share this, what, um, what Peace Dealer said on Instagram. Let me clear magical message. This is a peace dealer, but is in Libra, the signs of Virgo. Are you are activating a manifestation of the understanding of balance. So these two give you real patterns that you have officially brought in, and I promise you, I will keep on going and keep on being the best. But reasons. This is the peace. Holler at your boy. You are effectively manifesting supernatural techniques that you have spent the better half of your entire life, but more recently, six months, and even more recently, two weeks, setting up together, and bam, look at you, telling all of your haters that they can suck on your energetic lollipop that is rainbow-flavored, because rainbow-flavored lollipops make peace and love go around. See how the moon is in Libra? There was what I was going to say, but it's just not an Aries raw day. So we're going to make it classy. You can let people know, just for the sake of balance and harmony, why hate on you when they can suck on your rainbow lollipop? You have rainbow lollipops to give and pass around. And that way we can promote peace and unity. And you're going to make them suck your rainbow lollipop because that's just how we move in today. The moon is squaring Pluto. And that brings let me just say that again the moon in libra on the south node is making a 270 degree closing square with pluto hades in capricorn two words social pressure the social pressure to maintain your raw individuality and understanding how to balance that with frauds i mean with other people and also with people who align with you. And the pressure against maintaining that 90 degree square, 180 degree oppositions represent outside influences against what is Capricorn, the authoritative collective. You could look at it as an amalgamation of narratives and just what everyone thinks and believes. So you're having to maintain how you're balancing these behaviors you're activating against traditions and pretty much bullshit. You might not think it's a lot, a lot of the stuff that your parents made you do and that you're making your kids do and your parents' parents made your parents do and your parents' parents' parents made your parents do and you like only do because like that's just what you guys do. It's all bullshit. It's all, I know some of you don't like to hear that. I know some of you are very proud of these traditions too and you just hate to see them crumbling in front of your very eyes. It's the apocalypse. <laughs> I know you don't like that. And you're, you're not even gonna like how, where it's going. Like Pluto's gonna go in Aquarius. It's gonna make you cry. Anyway, yes, you must maintain this evolution of, of individuality and a vulnerability that it takes to express this. Because a lot of people are fake. Like when it comes down to actually expressing who you are and what you really like, there are ways in which we may unconsciously self-edit ourselves because we don't want to come off a certain way. Anyway, you're not going to be able to do that today. So, you know, social pressure. Are you going to maintain everything that you've activated or are you just going to buckle in the pressure of quite literally other people's viewpoints, opinions, philosophies. See, a lot of people let it give you philosophy. They let it tell you how their beliefs identify with them, but they don't give you truth. They don't disassociate what they believe versus what actually is. Those people are delusional. Yeah, a lot of them have degrees. Some of them don't have degrees. They could be poor, rich. They're delusional. They don't know how to separate both, and then they project stuff. Anyway, make sure to let them know they can suck on your rainbow lollipop as well. Because we're promoting peace and unity here. I don't have any Libra in my chart, so this is ingratiating for me. But it, it worked. So, yes, just suck on the rainbow lollipop. All right? Anyone who gives you any trouble, just literally tell them to suck 
on your rainbow lollipop. It tastes like grape. It tastes like watermelon. Man, some Virgo, somebody's Virgo friend said I had a yuck mouth, and that just really pissed me off, because I be going at, like, the only people that I take chapstick when I be showing up crusty on this, just the cleanest for Virgo. I, it's not good enough for you, I see. It's not good enough for you. Oh, they have a yuck mouth. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, I just want to be petty. Anyway, it's cool, because she can suck a rainbow lollipop. We promote peace, love, and unity out here. Okay, it's all good. But no, for real, that square, it's not good. It's not well. It's, it's very challenging. And if, if, if your development and growth isn't worth more to you than what other people in their limited perspective who can't even see more than 1% of the electromagnetic spectrum, if that matters more than everything you've grown and built, then you are going to... Buckle, buckle down, down under this social, social pressure, pressure, which is funny, man. It's just what other people think. And now, I want, I want you to kind of know how I'm trivializing if you think of all, all the issues that are going on in the world, like, like 28 degrees is representing the high quality of like, like Social collective issues, issues that have been, been affecting it since long before 2008, and then we can bring it to 1700. So, so for me to trivialize all that and all what, what everyone else is going through, through it, and it's just other people's opinions, it's not important. It's crazy, crazy because that's, that's really all, all that is. It's not even that important. It's really just what other people think. You would think it's important. You would think it's the most important. It's trash. It's not even important. And this is why the North Node in Air was the same for Gibbs. What's up with you, G? What's up with you? No, 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 I don't get what's good with you. For real though, what's good with you? Actually, really, what is good with you? Have you really decided? Because this moon in Libra is pretty much going to force your hand. And for those of you who are fully aligned or just fairly, keyword fairly, because you want to balance Libra, fairly aligned with who you are, you're going to be Gucci. You're going to be. Gucci, we're coming at the end of this transit, but being that the sun is at 25 degrees, you're me- Okay. Guys, I don't know if you've ever seen- All right, that's a stupid question. You've seen anime, you've seen, like, television shows, and they are these tropes where at that moment of pressure, someone takes everything that they've learned, and they don't have time to think about how to do what they have to do. They just do it. And they, I don't know, awaken power, right? Cancer is a metahuman ability and power. Libra is classic superpowers. All those Virgo suns and Virgo risings out here acting like they don't have literal superpowers. I mean, some of you see it because you also be acting too. Libra, I see you. Scorpio, I see you. Sag. And if you're after Sagittarius, just, just miss me. Okay, I mean, we're not talking. All right, cool. So, like, I don't know if you know, Leo, you're kind of in there, too. Like, these are the supers. Leo, Virgo, Libra, uh, Scorpio. The, a, any energy you have there, like, people who have Mars and Scorpio or Leo have super strength. Textbook, super strength. Like, super, like, superpowers. The first four zodiac signs are the individualized quality of just raw power. Everything that you can do as a human with just your raw power. Once we step into cancer, that bitch is psychic. Psy that female dog, I was of course saying, bitch, as if cancer was like a female terrier. You know, my bitch, she's psychic, okay? She'd be snooping around and she'd be just knowing who people are. I thought he was cool, she was barking at him. And now I found out, oh, she's psychic. You know what I'm saying? Whew, that's close. All right, but once we step into Libra, that's superpowers, that's superpowers. So, okay, we just activated a new moon opposite Neptune in Pisces, which now gave you a very masterful analytical awareness of every single possibility your imagination can conceive to literally not only activate this new cycle of holding space for your dreams to be made real, but to actively also make your dreams be made real. And now we're manifesting that activation with this balancing understanding of your social actions, which I'm not even gonna hit you with that jargon. The super powered quality of Libra, if you think of Aries as raw power through the understanding of psychic cancer that now draws out your super potential, right? Or really, you don't have to complicate this. If you've ever rehearsed to practice and perform, whether you believe it or not, your performance was an application of your superpower. Maybe it's not at Superman's level, maybe it is beyond Superman's level. Pisces, I'm looking at you. What are y'all still doing on this planet? 
Aquarius is about to awaken to. I don't know if you've seen Invincible, but the Viltrumites are awakening. Aquarius, I'm just going to snitch on you. It is. What it is. I, I wasn't. I was hesitant on if I would snitch on you, but you got the whole galaxy afraid of y'all. So I'm just gonna snitch, Pisces. I'm gonna wait until I snitch on you because you still have Saturn in your sign, and I don't want beef with Kronos. So I'm gonna wait till it goes into Aries, and I'm gonna just sn hardcore snitch on y'all. See how I'm interrupting my my transit this 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 moon message. I'm a hardcore snitch on y'all. Hardcore. 2025. You got, you got your OG in your sign. So if I snitch on you, Neptune will just troll me. It'll just give me a, a misery. You know what I'm saying? But it's cool. Your OG gonna leave your sign 2025? Hardcore snitching. Hardcore. I'm a snitch all on y'all. I'm not a snitch, but I'm a, I'm a truth time. I'm a he said so much. He said so much, you know, it, the outside voices and being firm enough to know your own voice and just be comfortable enough with yourself that you could just do your own thing without having to seek the approval of others. And it's lonely freaking being right sometimes and it's lonely being different and it's lonely being, and I think maybe... Maybe that's why there's such a convergence on being a part of large groups and accepting group ideas and not wanting to miss out, but to be a part of the crowd and to be on the bandwagon because you're so used to being knocked around and so used to being alone that it's way more sexy and appealing to be a part of the group. And then <laughs> you ever see that? That that okay. There's sometimes there's the that big dog and the little dog from Tom and Jerry, and he's like, rah, 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 and then the little dog's like, yeah, yeah, Spike, get him, Spike, and then the little dog is like, rah, rah, rah. And, and and then the big dog's like, shut up, you know, like I don't need you to repeat everything I say, you know. <laughs> Or like I've seen so many movies where it's like the, the little sidekicks around the big dog are like, you know, the big dog. The funny thing about that, Terry, is the big dog doesn't even have a chance to think. The big dog doesn't have time to change because the little dogs are behind them like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, OK, can you shut up? Can you be quiet? Because you're 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 like way more into this than maybe I am. I'm just being me. But you're so busy being me and and. um how do you say it? It's not support, but reinforcing the idea of who I am, thinking that you know who I am, like you're actually creating an identity for me that I have to live up to. Like there's a lot going on with people. It's not just the figureheads. It's the it's the underlings around people that reinforce the idea. And it's the pressure to keep pleasing people that even large scale people with uh, books and channels and, and um, personas, they can't even escape their own identity because there's so many people watching. And you spoke about this the other day when it came to uh, the tarot lady, but this is something that you talk about a lot, Terry. Yeah, because we do, you know, like when people become at the forefront of something, they're not allowed to change their opinions because all of a sudden they're, what they've said in the past has become um, quote, the truth or, or whatever. And, but we're constantly evolving. And so somebody in the tarot who, for example, has, you know, has, has a certain way of thinking, but they are introduced to, their, their okay their higher self brings them uh, further along the journey so what was their truth before what was what was um what they believed in they now have to believe something else and are they brave enough to to step aside from that belief that they had that they were bringing forward and and step out onto the new path and people don't want to see that change because they've all rallied around somebody and this is what that person said but meanwhile that person has now said well that was a truth then but now i've moved into another truth and and um so then they're they're chastised for making and connecting with their higher self 
because people don't want that. People don't want change. They like to be comfortable in a certain area and say, okay, well, I'm comfortable with this truth and that's it. But, but part of our evolution is stepping forward into that unseen territory and making the, the transformation. And, and I pulled another card just before that and uh, we started talking and it's, it is about transformation and a fresh new way of living energy. So we are, um, when we allow ourselves to transform, then the energies are going to come in and we're going to be provided through our connection with our higher self. We're going to be provided other scenarios to expand our way of thinking because, you know, we can be in a box and we can open the box and we say, oh, wow, look at all this new information. But guess what? That's that box is within another box and that's within another box. So as soon as we feel comfortable with something, then we have to realize that, wait a minute, it's time for us to expand our awareness because comfort is is just part of that whole inertia and, and we're not we're not growing as soon as we're too comfortable we're not growing and and we're not um opening up to more understanding um and i know i've gone on a long and they, were, they had a word for that the unknown unknowns and they call them black swans mm, yeah because there's things that are you, you keep unpacking the box because we're actual truth seekers. See, people who are like against all this, like, no, I don't want to know all this information. Like, they're comfortable. They don't need to know anything else. They did. They got a foundation on their beliefs. But here we are, like, digging into the unknowns, and then we get an answer, and then there's more unknowns after that. And uh, but but how can we be so certain about things when we're still unpacking? The boxes and I feel like there's lots of things we won't know until you're out of this body you won't know <laughs> and you're exactly. but it's like you're gonna punch somebody in the eye if they disagree but it's like you don't know you don't know everything you're not even close and as we just keep learning more things it's just mind shattering yeah but, um, you know that, that old thing we don't know what we don't know Good right? night. Yeah. Good and, night. You know, like I know in, in meditation classes that I've taught, one of the things is like, what do you know and what do you believe, right? We believe something and then it gets to a point where we know, but beyond that knowing, then we have to leave that and say, okay, I may know this, but there's a, a bigger truth out there. And that's when it's, when we, we can believe something, we can know something, and when we know it, then it's time to step outside the box and open up to something more and, and explore. And this is this is what I, I, I really believe this is what our soul's journey is about, is opening up to new information and and allowing that information to transform us, right? It's 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 about surrendering to the journey release control and then allow the transformation to to happen for us it's and and live in those new energies <clears throat> and then when they become too comfortable then it's a, it's time to say okay now i've got to um expand on that why you know why am i um just feeling i'm not growing anymore so it's that process within us that keeps us moving forward and and propels us because as soon as we stop then we just start to um we start to um lose our life force because that the, the movement, the movement propels us right and as soon as we stop then we give in and uh we're no longer we're not no longer moving we just become um inert and and we and we start to um degrade ourselves and the i think thing is create or dissipate yeah 
create or dissipate. So yeah, you begin yeah. to dissipate. Yeah. And I think that, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people want to move faster and they want things to happen and they really don't understand like, no, things are really happening for us really quickly. If you look around at your friends and family, you're like, what, you guys are eating macaroni again? What, it's another birthday party? You know, what, like, it's just, um, they're on an endless cycle, maybe not growing and still having, calling you with the same problems. Like, oh, my finances, oh, Bobby, Bobby threw the laptop out the window, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, still with the same chaos, still with the same drama, still with the same bull exactly. crap. And you're like, golly, I'm starting to write my own journal or, oh, wait a minute, I started a YouTube channel or, oh, wow, I read this great book. And you're like looking at people thinking like, damn, they're they're on some type of uh, some type of Ferris wheel or merry-go-round and they're or, you know, little hamster wheel still doing the same thing and uh, be encouraged. But I think what what maybe people want, what people are craving, and this is why you can get locked into groups of uh, group thinking like this, is because you're looking for the final frontier, right? You're you're on Star Trek, and you want it to be the final battle and the final answer, and the fi- and it's like, no, this is a journey, and enjoy it, and enjoy the paintbrush and the strokes and the colors, and then when you mix the colors, like the new colors, colors you've never seen before, and just continue to enjoy the unlimited surprises, Mm -hmm. the unlimited amount of synchronicities. Those are things that actually bring me joy, not knowing everything and enjoying the actual surprises instead of wanting to be the person, the first one to give the answer and the first one to know this and the only one with the answer and to be, you know, and to have that final judgment. I don't want final judgment or final say over anyone. I don't want the responsibility, you know? So, you know, I think a lot of people are really taking the flavor out of life by trying to have all these answers and trying to know everything. And I think we discussed this before, Terry, is, and I think it's, it's what has happened is you've taken spirituality into the money system and tried, you know, when, when, when you monetize these things, not that people shouldn't get paid for their services, but there's a lot of things maybe you could let go on and move away from or release mm-hmm. if you didn't have a fear of losing money. Yeah. yeah. If I don't make a new book, I can't make more money. And if I don't keep pushing my ideas and if people don't keep following me, then I can't keep making money. And so now you've entered a fear cycle trying to hold on to something instead of allowing the perfection of life, which is the mystery and the journey to happen for you that allows you to evolve and to continue to change. Yeah. Yeah. You can't grow being locked in any of these systems. You can't, I, you know, I was, I would like to do tours in Egypt and we decided to wait and spend family time instead of trying to be in a hurry because I have a problem with being money motivated to do things that are strictly money motivated. I don't want to be locked into doing things and not enjoying life because I just want the money. Yeah. But somehow I keep getting blessed with more money <laughs> because I don't I don't want to compromise anything in my life for the money. Like yeah. I'm not going to yeah. call across the stage at the VMA awards just for money. I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to keep calling you to say, "Hey, listen to me, talk to me." Da-da-da-da-da-da. Because I want money. I'm I'm just not I my spirit is uh moving in the opposite direction of that. But that is a trap. It's a thirst trap that is hard to escape when everything is reliant on money. And that is the way that people stay locked up in jobs that they hate because you got to have insurance and you got to have money. And I remember when I walked off my job or I was about to walk off my job, I was about to give them 90 days notice. And then I got a call that says, hey, we need you to leave now because you're retired and we can't have you in the building. Because I finally just said, fuck it. If I don't, you know what? I don't know how I'm going to make it, but I know I can't be here anymore. And then I got the call that said, get out. Get out. So 
when you can get past the fear of relying on certain things, uh, certain certain ways to earn money, then it can open you up to other ways to finally get the things you want and be uh, abundant in your finances at the same time. But you have to be open to it. You can't be so rigid because sometimes we think like, oh, I'm going to get it this way. And then it's like, no, there's a plan. Source has a plan that's way over here, but you're so focused on forcing this ball up the hill the wrong way. And guess what? The ball is actually a cube. So you're just going to keep struggling. And, and, and because you think it belongs this way, you think it should be done this way and you don't let go. And that's a part of what you were saying earlier. You can't always think that you know the way. You have to sit back and, and allow things to come to you in that way. But that's a lot for people. So, hey. <laughs> well, I just, I, I just want to. Know, and we've used this analogy before. It's like you're driving down the interstate, and you're going from A to B, and uh, you know, yeah, you, you stop to get gas, and you and you pull off the interstate, and you get caught up in in the new politics of this new town. But that's not where you were going. Jax is running for governor, and she's like, hey, I'm at the, I need your help. <laughs> we got to help Jax run for governor. Now we done got distracted. We, we got campaign flyers. We, we you know, we painting the town and, and cutting lawns and, and kissing babies. But it was like, wait a minute, that wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah. And we get pulled off. And, and this is, you know, going back to all that, when we don't stop and, and connect with who we are, then it's easy for us to get pulled off into directions that, you you know, at some point you'll say, how did I get here? That's not where I thought I was going. And so we have to get ourselves back onto that interstate so we can get to point B, you know, and and just be careful with the distractions that come along the way. And, and it's that's the time that we step, we step back and say, is this is this what is in my highest good? You know, do I follow along with that? Do I start being the campaign manager now? I'm not <laughs> going Sorry, Jack. Jack, do it yourself. That's right. Because if it was, yeah, a lot of people are being lost into the what do you call it? The campaign. They're getting crushed by the campaign. So. We're going to end it here and um, maybe we'll put these two episodes back to back.